Hi, I'm Tim Tyler and this is a video about why dietary energy restriction prolongs lifespan. Dietary energy restriction is a feeding strategy which has proven itself to be the single most effective means of extending the lives of many species of animal. Very briefly, it consists of a feeding regime which contains the range of nutrients needed to support and sustain life but which is low in available energy. The regime is normally initiated after maturation to help ensure that it does not cause developmental problems during the growth phase. It increases both mean and maximum lifespans, sometimes fairly dramatically. It appears to operate by putting the organism into a state where it is at a reduced risk of dying. Some have proposed that it may even slow the overall rate of senescence. There are thousands of human subjects on the regime, hoping it will do for them what it does for experimental animals, and at least some of them seem to be enjoying fairly positive results. In response to the scientific findings, I myself have been deliberately restricting my intake of dietary energy since 2001, in the hope of retaining my youthful vitality for as long as is reasonably possible. This video is concerned with the reason why dietary energy restriction is effective at extending the lifespans of animals. The evolution of senescence is a complicated subject which we will touch on only briefly here. It is clear that even non-living entities such as cars and houses exhibit senescence. The universal tendency of all things to increase in entropy over time is usually blamed for this. However, some living things barely exhibit senescence at all, showing that nature can produce repair and regeneration mechanisms when they are sufficiently strongly favoured. Why then do most organisms senesce? There are a couple of important theories that suggest the rate of ageing is the result of adaptive processes. One is the theory of antagonistic pleiotropy. This theory proposes that genes that delay the expression of other deleterious genes are favoured. It also suggests that owls may be favoured if they have beneficial early effects but deleterious later effects. A special case of antagonistic pleiotropy arises when organisms trade early reproduction off against self-maintenance. This is such a common trade-off that the theory has its own name, the disposable soma theory. This theory states that reproductive and maintenance processes compete with each other for resources. Reproducing early clearly has many advantages, and consequently, somatic tissue maintenance programs do not receive sufficient investment from the organism to support indefinite survival. Various theories have been proposed to explain why dietary energy restriction prolongs life. For example, it has been proposed that dietary energy is effectively a toxic substance, something you can overdose on, like lead or mercury. However, most of the proposed theories do not withstand close inspection. I will be giving an explanation on the level of evolutionary theory, without looking at the proximate biochemical mechanisms by which the effects are produced very much. The basic idea is that the effect is the result of adaptations which control the allocation of resources during famine conditions. What seems to be happening is that those metabolic programs responsible for maintenance activities in organisms are being allocated more resources. However, this is happening in response to a resource shortage. This might seem like a bit of a paradox. How can it be that a resource shortage triggers greater resource expenditure in some areas? What seems to be happening is that organisms facing a resource shortage react by going into an altered physiological state, a survival mode, where allocated resources are channeled away from the reproduction-related activities that normally preoccupy organisms and into activities that promote survival in the face of the current shortage. Restricted organisms try to survive until the end of their famine, and hope to refeed themselves and reproduce again when it is over. They want to be as viable as possible at the end of their famine, and so do their best with whatever resources they have available to ensure that they are in a productive state at the end of it. The process of attempting to live until the end of a resource shortage, and being in a po as positive a state as possible at the end of it, is likely to result in something similar to retarding the ageing process. Being in a re reproductively viable state at the end of a famine may not present exactly the same challenges that living to a ripe old age does, but there are enough similarities for simulated famines to be effective at both retarding the ageing process and prolonging life. Since it is not intuitively obvious how a smaller resource pie can result in some processes getting more of that pie, I sometimes find it useful to help explain the phenomenon using an analogy. Imagine you are going on a holiday and have a limited budget to spend. You might typically spend your money relaxing and having a good time. However, imagine also that you have to buy a ticket home again, and then consider the effect of budget cuts. Initially, reductions in the budget might result in similar behaviour, but for a shorter duration. You pack your bags and go home earlier. 
However, consider the effect of budget cuts, which mean that you can no longer afford the ticket home. Suddenly, what resources you have start getting spent on activities that would not have received attention before. You might wire home for more funds. You might try and get a job. Or you might gamble the money in a casino, hoping to increase your funds enough to be able to afford the vital ticket home. This shift in the recipients of resources that occurs when they are limited is very much like the survival mode which results from dietary energy restriction. When reproduction is not a very realistic possibility, the main evolutionary force that is responsible for the ageing process in the first place, the diverting of resources from maintenance activities into reproductive ones, i.e. the disposable soma theory, has its polarity reversed. Suddenly, what pays off is diverting resources away from reproductive activities and towards maintenance pathways to avoid wasting resources on offspring that would be doomed anyway, and instead allow the current environmental challenge to be survived. Our ancestors' genes figured this puzzle out, and we have a genetic program to deal with the situation. This affects the switch around in the resource allocation system and can be activated by strongly restricting intake of dietary energy. Looking at the effects of dietary energy restriction on humans, it isn't difficult to see how it might result in reduced fertility. Females exhibit reduced body fat stores and may even exhibit amenorrhea, a cessation of menstruation. Males turn into weak-looking stick figures that most females do not find sexually attractive. However, nonetheless, there are some people willing to undergo the process for various reasons. Some can't have kids in the first place. Some value their future existence highly. Others just want a dose of the health and vitality that the regime can bring. I hope an understanding of some of the reasons why dietary energy restriction is effective at extending the lifespan of many species of animal will help illuminate the decisions of those contemplating embarking on the diet. Enjoy!